So as I'm slowly starting to expand my studio and add a little bit of outboard analog gear, I figured it's time we get a rack. So I went online and started shopping and found that a 6U rack unit started at about $200 and goes all the way up to $400 plus. So for the price of about $45, $46 with some tax, we ended up building this. So with one quick trip to Lowe's Hardware and one order off of Amazon and about two hours, we ended up saving ourselves over $150. Now, to me, it also feels good to look over and see something in the studio that I actually built myself. It just gives me more of a sense of pride in the studio and it makes me wanna reach out and use all the gear that's inside of that rack unit. Now, before we jump into the video and break down exactly how we built this, two things you are gonna need is a drill and some sort of saw to cut the wood. Now, now, if you have a really cool Lowe's like I do, a lot of times if you ask them, they'll make the cuts for you if you just know your measurements. So if you go to the store prepared, a lot of times you can walk out of there with all the individual pieces you need and then all you need is a cheap drill in order to connect them all together. So to make this, all you need is four simple things. First, we're looking at the wood. Here is a 16 inch wide piece of pine board from Lowe's. It is eight feet long, so that gives us enough length to cut our four pieces that we will need. Then we just need some rack ears. Now I just got these off of Amazon. They were $15 for the 6U. You could also get 4U or 8U, depending on how big you wanna build your rack. Then we just need to grab the screws. Number 10, 5 8 inch are for attaching the rack ears to the wood. And then these two and a half drywall screws are for connecting the wood pieces to each other to mount the whole thing together. So first we're going to cut our side pieces of the rack. To do this, we measure the length of the ear and then add an extra half inch for the cut. This half inch gives us an eighth inch on the top and the bottom of the ear. So when we insert all of our hardware into the rack, it has an eighth inch gap on the top or the bottom. This allows for a little bit of airflow to keep a little bit of air going over the hardware units to keep them a little bit cooler because they can tend to heat up when they're inside of a rack. Now, after we measure both of the sides and make our cuts, one thing just to add a little bit of finished feeling to this rack is to go ahead and sand off the edges all the way around each piece. This gives it a little bit more of a nice rounded feel on the corners so you don't have any of those sharp edges or any remnants from where your cut was made. Now we're gonna go ahead and secure the rack ears. I just lined up that eighth inch gap on the top and the bottom by eye. I didn't actually measure it, but it feels like it's pretty much equal on both the top and the bottom. Then I picked about a half inch in at the edge so the rack gear can recess a little bit into the unit, secured the lower part, and then just measured the top part to make sure there were equal distances from the length of the wood, secured it, put in several screws, and then repeated the same thing on the other side. Now to cut the top piece, you could either measure a rack that you already have, but if you don't already have a rack, but you have some rack gear, insert the rack gear into the two sides, and then measure the total distance between. And now that we have all four of our pieces cut with the rack gear secured, let's go ahead and secure the pieces together. So we're first just gonna connect one side to the other side. I always like to drill pilot holes because that just ensures that the wood isn't going to crack since we are drilling screws so close to the edge. One little tip you can do is to use the Phillips drill bit just to make a slightly bigger hole before you put in the screw to help it sink into the wood a little bit easier. And for this, I'm using the two and a half inch screws. Also, I like to do the bottom first, just in case I screw up anything, that's gonna be the bottom side of the rack. So all those mess ups are hidden, and then we go over to the top. After you secure all four pieces of wood, you should have something that looks just like a rack with some ears inside of it. Now you could take this one step further, you could fill in the holes covering up the screws, sand it down, and then you could go ahead and either color it, you could stain it, you could add a varnish, you could add a nice finish to it. But just for the sake of getting this done and into the studio so we can get back to work, I'm just gonna leave it as a raw wood. I also kind of like the vibe and the look of that. And then the only thing left to do is start installing your rack equipment. Now, currently the only one that I have in the studio that's gonna go in here is the Warm Audio 2 MPX. 
but I plan on adding a couple more units to this rack in order to fill it out and have some more external gear in the studio. So currently the way I have it set up in my studio, it's still the raw exposed pine wood with the screw heads still being visible, but you could take it so many steps further. You could cover all the screw holes with some wood finish, sand it down. You could put a nice stain on the whole unit. You could paint it. You could pretty much do whatever you wanted to add your little artistic touch and make it fit the vibe of your studio. For now, I just wanted to get it in the studio, get gear in there so I could get back to work. So up until further notice, it's just going to stay looking like some raw, authentic, vintage wood and I'm happy with that because it looks cool and I like it so I hope this video hopefully inspired you to maybe make something and add on to your studio we've got a bunch more videos coming up my name is Stu this is create educate and inspire like subscribe click all the buttons down below we really appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one